Hello and a very warm welcome to a fresh new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on all that is happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. New sources of methane to new sources of anti-malarial drug. We have many exciting stories in store for you today as well. But before we step into the details, let's first take a look at the headlines. Air pollution and child health, UNICEF reveals startling statistics. Harvesting methane, solving energy crisis. New source of drugs, new hope for malaria. In our In Focus segment today, we will discuss about science of vaccination and how it can revolutionize healthcare. And now the news in detail. Healthy children, everyone would agree, are the hope and future of the world. But while we try hard to protect our children from injuries and infections, are they really safe? Well, how are we going to protect our children if the very air they breathe in is toxic? Yes, a recent report by UNICEF takes a stock of children exposed to extreme levels of air pollution and the results are alarming. Let us see this report. Smoke-filled air and tons of firework remains. Probably the sight which Indians in almost every part of the country woke up to after Diwali. Yes, as both residents and environment struggles to recover from the lethal impacts that a weekend of celebrations has imposed, here comes an alarming report. The new report from UNICEF states that majority of the 2 billion children in the world who are subjected to the lethal effects of air pollution live in northern India and neighbouring countries. The shocking report indicates that around 600,000 children younger than 5 years succumb across the globe to various air pollution related disease. According to the report, satellite images of pollution along with ground data with demographic patterns indicates that almost one in seven of the world's children, that is about 300 million, live in areas with levels of outdoor air pollution that is at least six times higher than international guidelines. Of these, 220 million children are from South Asia, mostly northern India. The main contributors to such high toxic levels of outdoor air pollution includes vehicle emissions, heavy use of fossil fuels, dust and burning of waste. The report highlights that drastic health impacts of air pollution on children. Children who breathe twice as quickly and take more air in relation to their body weight compared to adults also face much higher health risks. According to experts, the pollutants in the air not only damage children's developing lungs but also cross the blood-brain barrier and permanently damage developing brains. Hence, children exposed to high levels of pollution are observed to have poor physical and cognitive development. Children are the future of the world. With the findings come a week ahead of the COP22 in Marrakesh, Morocco, we can hope that world leaders will agree to proactive measures to reduce pollution globally and minimize children's exposure to pollution. Methane, a gas which is a byproduct of decomposition of organic matter, is found in large quantities trapped in hydrates in seabeds. And if this methane is harvested, it has the potential to solve the energy crisis of the world. But the big question is how to sustainably extract this methane from hydrates to be used as fuel? Well, some Indian researchers do have the answer. While fossil fuels like coal and petroleum dwindle in supplies, one fossil fuel may be an alternative for a long time in the future. Yes, methane. The clean fuel is expected to last at least few more years and help us solve the energy crisis of the world. 
especially as methane is found in large quantities trapped as hydrates on the seabeds. Gas hydrates are one of the natural resource of energy. Uh, it has uh, methane inside these gas hydrates. What happens basically at certain pressure and temperature conditions under the seabed, methane molecules which are originated through the biogenic resources and the water which is already present there forms a ice-like crystalline material. And these ice-like crystalline materials has methane inside these cages. And the team of Indian researchers have developed a know-how to extract this trapped methane that can be used as fuel. The research comes from a team under the guidance of Dr. Rajneesh Kumar from National Chemical Laboratory, Pune. The research deals with extraction of methane from natural gas hydrates which are formed under high temperature and pressure in sea beds. The technology involves replacing the methane molecules in the hydrates with carbon dioxide which is produced from power plants. The sustainable technology makes uses of carbon dioxide produced as a result of burning methane to further release methane from gas hydrates, while the energy can be used for electricity production. So what we propose is that use carbon dioxide which is available in plenty which comes from our power plants and which is not desired to be released into the atmosphere, you can use this carbon dioxide and replace methane from this carbon dioxide under the seabed. So for every mole of carbon dioxide which you can replace from this methane hydrate, you can produce one mole of methane and this methane can be utilized, uh, can be burned and the CO2 which is coming out from the burning of methane can be again uh, sequestered and the energy which comes out from the combustion can be utilized for an electricity production. The technique is highly economical, environment friendly and sustainable. In India, large gas hydrates are found in Krishna Godavari Basin and Andaman Nicobar Islands. Tapping even 10% of these reserves can solve the energy challenge for the next 100 years. The study has the potential to solve the energy crisis of the world. Artemisinin, the drug derived from the leaves of a sweet wormwood which has brought new hope to eradicating malaria. But this wonderful medicine has been limited in production as it is difficult to synthesize it chemically and the only source of supply are woodworm plants that take a long time to mature. But now, specifically engineered tobacco plants may act as factories of artemisinin. The study brings a new hope to malaria endemic areas across the globe. Four hundred and thirty eight thousand deaths and two hundred and fourteen million new cases. The WHO statistics for malaria are horrifying. The staggering numbers are despite the discovery of artemisinin, the most novel and effective therapies against malaria. One of the main reasons of malaria being a still a rampant infection is that artemisinin, a drug derived from the leaves of sweet wormwood, is highly limited in its production. While it is very difficult to synthesize this compound chemically, wormwood plants take between 190 and 240 days to mature and yields only meager quantities of artemisinin. But a ray of hope could be the new engineered tobacco plant developed by Dr. Shashi Kumar and team from the International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology in New Delhi. When I was a researcher in uh, USA, there we published a paper in metabolic engineering and we produced a precursor to these kind of drugs like artemisinin and others. So we thought if we take further, we stretch these genes further towards the, like some drug. Artemisinin is like important in context of India, 80% uh, area of India under the high risk of malaria. The team has converted tobacco plants into artemisinin factories which can synthesize the compounds faster and better from wormwood. 
the researchers have genetically engineered a tobacco plant by inserting six of the genes involved in artemisinin synthesis pathway into the cell nucleus of tobacco plant. It was observed that these genetically modified plants yields 0.8 milligrams of artemisinin in each gram of dried leaves after being raised for a mere 60 days. Dr. Kumar has also tested an herbal therapy in which he fed infected mice with leaf tissues from his engineered tobacco plants. It was observed that parasite loads in animals fed the leaves were two-thirds of those in animals dosed with pure artemisinin, indicating that extracting the compound from the leaves may not be really necessary. Researchers aim to extend this study to humans using lettuce plants as both tobacco and wormwood are toxic. So our strategy will be to, grow, uh, to produce this drug in uh, like a plant lettuce. So a lettuce farming, uh, after the harvesting of lettuce, you can dry them, make a powder, measure the drug dose and put in the capsule. So every capsule will be marked how much uh, artemisinin active content is there. So that way you can store this drug uh, at room temperature in any medical stores. So that, uh, will, uh, that, that methodology will be avoiding this uh, uh, extraction and purification. So the cost of this way drug, very cheap kind of drug that way we can produce. The study which opens up new avenues of treatment for malaria has been published in the journal Molecular Plan. And now it is time to take a very short break. We'll be back with more science news. Keep watching Science Monitor. Jim Corbett National Park can be befittingly called the paradise of tigers as it holds a large population of tigers in its breathtaking landscapes that consist of different varieties of flora and fauna. Named after the legendary tiger hunter Jim Corbett, it is the first National Park of India established in 1936. On the banks of the Raman Ganga Reservoir, the Sona Nadi zone is home to elephants and leopards, along with hundreds of species of birds. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. Welcome back after the break, you're watching Science Monitor. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our segment, Science Express. With the aim of promoting interest in science among students, Inspire Science Camp was organized in Bhivani, Haryana recently. The camp was organized by Chaudhary Bansi Lal Vishwavidyalaya and inaugurated by Governor of Haryana, Professor Kaptan Singh Solanki. Many prominent researchers, including Dr. Soumya Swaminathan, Director General ICMR, gave talks on this occasion. 
दिस इज साइंस कैम्प विच इज ऑर्गेनाइज बाई इंस्पायर इंस्पिरेशन एंड हैवी गेट टू नो दैट अबाउट साइंस इट्स एक्चुअली गोइंग टू हेल्प मी इन माई वे इन डिसाइडिंग वट आई नीड टू डू इन माई फ्यूचर लाइक वी मेट अ बॉटनिस्ट वी मेट अ डॉक्टर ऑफ ट्यूबर क्लोसिस वी गेट टू वी गेट सम हिंट अबाउट अ फ्यूचर वट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इट हेल्प्स इन डिसाइडिंग डी एस टी इंस्पायर साइंस कैंप कराने का हमारा उद्देश्य ये था कि ताकि यहाँ के बच्चों को साइंस के बारे में जानकारी मिले वो विज्ञान के विषय को पढ़ें और विज्ञान को अपना कैरियर बनाएँ और मेरा ये मानना है कि देश का विकास साइंस के विकास से ही हो सकता है और ये बच्चे ग्रामीण आंचल से आते हैं इन्हें ग्रा इन्हें विज्ञान के बारे में ज़्यादा मालूम नहीं है तो इस पाँच दिन के इस कार्यक्रम का मेन जो उद्देश्य है तो इन बच्चों को साइंस की टेक्नोलॉजी से अवगत कराना साइंस की जो एक्साइटमेंट है साइंस के विजय में जो खोज हुई है इन बच्चों को पता लगे कि हम किस विषय में हम अपनी साइंस की पढ़ाई कर सकें अबाउट 500 हंड्रेड स्टूडेंट्स अक्रॉस द नेशन पार्टिसिपेटेड इन दिस फाइव डे इवेंट in one of the largest achievements in space science nasa has reported the completion of construction of the world's largest space telescope the james webb space telescope the telescope which has taken almost two decades to complete is the successor to nasa's 26 year old hubble space telescope an ariane 5 rocket will launch it from french guiana in october 2018 Prevention is better than cure. All of us are familiar with this saying. Needless to say, while many infections can be prevented by following simple practices of hygiene and care, not all can be. Now, infections caused by microorganisms have always been a huge threat to mankind, and the discovery of vaccines has been a game changer for the healthcare industry. Deadly diseases like polio and smallpox have been wiped off from many countries through extensive immunization programs. Today. Vaccines are the best defense we have against some of the serious preventable and sometimes deadly contagious diseases. So, what are vaccines and how do they work? Well, this will be the topic of our discussion in our segment in focus. Needless to say we are in a progressive world transformed by many new discoveries and inventions but despite all the development human society has not been able to protect itself from infections like chikungunya and malaria every year these infections claims millions of lives across the world and researchers across the world are in a constant and steady battle against these infections vaccination is probably the weapon that would help us in this fight Microorganisms are constantly finding their way to our bodies through the air we breathe, food we eat, and water we drink. The microbes interfere with normal biological functions and result in infections. The natural immune system present in poor bodies help us fight against these pathogens and protect us from disease. But at times human immune system may fall weak and pathogens may gain control of our bodies. if not treated properly infections may even result in death under these circumstances it becomes crucial to improve the immunity of the body immunization or vaccination is the technique of improving the immunity vaccination is the administration of an antigenic material called a vaccine to stimulate an individual's immune system to develop adaptive immunity to a pathogen During vaccination individuals are given very small and safe amount of viruses or bacteria that have been weakened or killed a vaccine can be administered orally by injection by puncture through transdermal or intranasal routes the vaccine consists of either live but weakened form of the virus protein toxins or other chemicals taken from a virus or bacteria or man-made substances that are very similar to the virus or bacterial chemicals 
development of vaccine is done in highly specialized laboratories and is a complex process. Due to the exposure to weak pathogens, the immune system learns to recognize and resist the infection later in life. As soon as the immune system recognizes these pathogens, it produces antibodies to fight against them. Hence, vaccines teach our body how to defend itself when germs such as viruses or bacteria attack and not make us ill. Sometimes the infections are so quick that the immune system may not have the time to respond. Under such circumstances, infected persons are given antibodies called antiserums. Today many deadly diseases like polio, tetanus, typhoid, cholera and smallpox has been curbed in many countries through extensive immunization programs. In a massive success in this direction, India has developed a vaccine against rotavirus which is being used in many states today. The rotavirus vaccine has been indigenously developed under a public-private partnership by the Ministry of Science and the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. The vaccine works against rotaviruses, known to cause diarrhea, which is estimated to kill 80,000 children each year in India. This vaccine is planned to be introduced in a phased manner. At the same time, India has been able to eradicate polio by the use of polio vaccine. India has also developed a vaccine against rubella, which causes severe congenital defects in newborns like blindness, deafness and heart defects. Another successful vaccine is the injectable polio vaccine to ensure multiple protection to the children along with oral polio vaccine. The IPV is being introduced in India along with 125 countries in a globally coordinated manner. While these vaccines are aimed at reducing the mortality and morbidity among children, the adult vaccine against Japanese encephalitis has been introduced in 179 endemic districts in nine states. Besides these, India has also developed a dengue diagnose kit which can diagnose the disease on the first day and the kit is being used across the country since 2009. The researchers who have developed the kit also claim that the vaccine for dengue will be available in the next five years. Needless to say, vaccines are the best defense we have against some serious, preventable and sometimes deadly contagious disease. And let us hope that with new vaccines in the coming years, the world would definitely be a healthier place. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. You can send your feedback and suggestions. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write into us at vigyanprasar, C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. Well, that is all for today. We'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, stay tuned to Rajasubha TV and think scientific all the time. Thanks for watching.